five burning questions and a little bit of playoff talk today. Ice cold, baby. Ice cold. In the East. <laughs> it's the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks Podcast. Hey, hey, Dallas Mavericks are NBA champions. Bang! 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 It's good! And the Mavericks have won the game! If you don't believe, you shouldn't be here. This episode brought to you by Spotify Green Room. Download the app and join us sometime this week to get on the, on the action. Spotify Green Room, changing the way we talk sports. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Angstead, media member and coordinator for the Locked On Podcast Network. And joining me, as always, my co host, contributor at Mavs.com. The conference finals fiend, the one more thing, King. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? Well, it feels like I haven't talked to you forever. Um, because <laughs> yesterday, we, because we talked, um, we, we had seven pods last week, guys, if you missed anything with the Mavericks of one of the craziest weeks in franchise history, I had a phone conversation today with a family member and they literally asked me, so what happened to the Mavs last week? <laughs> like, Whoa, you have time <laughs> because I have some time. Let's, uh, let's go through it. But if you missed anything, we put out seven pods last week. It's a crazy week. It feels weird that nothing happened over the past, I don't know, 24 hours <laughs> no. uh, because we're accustomed to that now. But it's only it's only going to like keep on, right? There's some big things that's going to be happening for the Mavericks fairly quick because we have a has, draft lottery to. coming up tomorrow. We have NBA draft just around the corner. Free agency is going to be here before you know it, August 1st. So some big decisions are going to be happening pretty soon. Yeah, in today's pod, we're going to get into the uh, the conference finals. Obviously, they're starting up. Suns Clippers game one played on Sunday. And then now we know the Eastern Conference finals are going to be between the Bucks and Kaka, the Hawks. Wild. Wild. I'm sure we'll have some takes on that later today. Um, so let's get into that. But yes, like Isaac said, there's going to be big stuff. So make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe on YouTube. We're, we're inching ever closer, like daily, just getting a little closer and a little closer to 5,000 subs on YouTube. We're at like 4,560 or something like that right now. So go subscribe to that. Great success on YouTube uh, since we've started. Blo actually blowing my mind how, how, how good it's going on YouTube um, compared to everything. But for the Mavericks, let's set this up. Just let's set the offseason stage a little bit now since this is a Monday. Uh, the draft lottery is Tuesday tomorrow, so that will happen, uh, which means the draft is on its way, man. Like, yeah. It's coming. Big draft, too. The draft will be July 29th, and so we're about about a month or about, um, about five, six weeks away from the draft. And then literally right after the draft, like the draft is the 29th, and then there's the 30th, the 31st, the 1st of August, and then August 2nd is free agency, like the day where we used to stay up till, you know, midnight and get, you know, and see free agents. Now it'll probably be like, I don't know, noon or whatever. Like they changed it so that it's prime time, 6 p.m. or whatever. Uh, but free agency will happen, and then free agency signing day will happen a couple days later. So that's the, memor the moratorium period is only, what, five days this year? And then summer league happens August eighth. Like we, like this is, and the season is going to start normal next year. Training camp will begin September 9th or September twenty um, eighth. Start of the season will be October nineteenth. Boom! All of a sudden, that's the that that's the season. We're only going to really have about five six weeks of off time from summer league until training camp. So it is really coming up fast. And so we're going to have a ton of offseason stuff, a ton of what the Mavericks should do. And so we're going to get into that a little bit later. Some burning questions for the Mavericks offseason about everything going on. But first, we're going to talk about the games that just happened. Uh, Clippers and the Clippers Suns quickly was a wild game because Chris Paul and Kawhi Leonard were both out. And it just looked like it just looked like a regular season game where a couple were, where a couple yeah. players were missing and you're like, "Oh, should I care about this?" And yet it had an insane it had insane like ramifications in the, in that game one. But Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton, man, that was that that duo, they did so well in that game. They played so incredibly well in that game. DeAndre Ayton showing what a big man can do against this Clippers team like unlike Porzingis could do, unlike what Gobert could do, he was able to be really successful against that Clippers small ball unit. Paul George's comment after the game about DeAndre Ayton and how 
how he's, you know, it, it was the most subtweet of a subtweet of Gobert <laughs> and KP, honestly. Yeah. Of, you know, Aiton is a more of a presence down low in the paint defensively, like all this different stuff. But no, I've been impressed by Aiton. I've, I mean, Devin Booker. Can we just say this real quick, though? I've seen people trying to do some victory laps on Devin Booker of, oh, people thought he was just empty stats. But, like, can we just admit players improve? Like, is that okay to, to admit that, like, players can get better and become and be better, like, teammates and getting guys involved and just, like, the team around them, too, that and- maybe a narrative about somebody at the beginning of their career. It's, it, you know, it is possible that they can be a different player, you know, five, six years down the road. I just seen some weird, like, hey, man, we don't remember when people said that. I'm like, yeah, early in his career, for sure. Like, I just don't, I, I kind of don't get it. Yeah, and like his stats are almost exactly the same this season, the season before, and the season before regular season wise. You're just making the right plays, and I mean the team around him is a lot better too. They've, yeah. they've grown all together. Chris Paul, obviously, but then in this game he t- took it all. Out. Also, he's playing the Clippers, right? Like this Clippers team without Kawhi Leonard, uh, and this Clippers team without a big man or anything. Go right to the rim. He's getting all Terrence these mid-range man, shots. They have Terrence, but man. but he's hitting. Terrence Mann's been well, has been great though. He actually defended him really well, but yeah. yeah. Devin Booker also just a better player. He got that little mid range that he honestly has that Kawhi mid range shot down yeah. and that little post up. Like he's just he's become an incredible player. And watching that game made me think, like, dang, there's so there's gonna be no LeBron, no Curry, no Durant in these in these finals. And but the the league is fine, right? Like the league the league is fine as far as young for talent. us for us and like for I, like basketball like people. But I I think we are gonna see the whole like. The ratings, will be ratings down are down, which age. ratings have been down for the league as a whole, but like the ratings will be down because it's the casual fan, right? The casual fan won't know KD, Lebr- like all those guys are going to be out. So it's like, oh, who's Devin Booker? Did he do a Kardashian? Like that, <laughs> you know, that's the, yeah. It's going to feel like that time after a, like Pippen and, or not a, what did I just say? <laughs> Bird, Bird and Magic and like Isaiah Thomas were out. And then all of a sudden Jordan like rose to power at that point. Yeah. And then after Jordan, it was like, okay, who else is going to come and rise up? And then it was like kind of Shaq and then Kobe. And uh, it's going to feel like one of those in-between times right now. But my, my whole point in bringing this up is that you have like Devin Booker with Phoenix. You have Donovan Mitchell who's balling out with the, the Jazz. Obviously Luka, Trey Young doing his thing. I mean, there's so yeah. many of these young players that have just been balling out. The league is in the league is in good shape in the future, is what I should sure. say. Like maybe the present will suffer a little bit because some of these stars are aging out or they got hurt and so they weren't able to get through the season. But these young players, man, it's just been it's been so fun to watch. Uh, speaking of which, let's get into the, this Hawks Sixers game. So the Sixers lose. And I mean, this is for the Mavericks. I'm I'm already getting in my DMs, in my mentions, oh, yeah. Ben Simmons trades the Mavs. Any thoughts on those? <laughs> I mean, I think that's a that's a bigger conversation that we can have on. We'll have plenty of pods to talk about Ben Simmons. I think we'll have plenty of time too, as Ben Simmons rumors will probably heat up. I just don't know what his trade value is. Like, I'm so intrigued with how he's viewed. Like some people. You know, I think Tim McMahon even tweeted already. It was like CJ McCollum. Like, man, I feel like that's disrespectful to CJ McCollum right now. Like, what, what is Ben Simmons' trade value around the league? And you know, I don't know if it's it's not viewed as a centerpiece of a team anymore. He is, you know, I think the the best case scenario for him right now is to find a really good team that with a really good system and saying, can we convince you to be a Draymond Green type of player? And in Portland. <laughs> yeah, but like I'm not giving up CJ for him. Like that that's You wouldn't the... give up CJ for him? No, no, Man, no. Man, that's so interesting. No. Because we just did a survey for Lockdown NBA and uh who lost the most stock, like trade stock or anything. And both Ben Simmons and CJ and Chris Alpsporzingis were on that list. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, somebody tweeted at me, you know, tonight and said, Hey, you you know, feel basically you feel validated for saying that he sucked two years ago. And it's like, okay. <laughs> In a way, I do feel a little validated of saying I don't like Ben. I never viewed Ben Simmons in that like superstar caliber type of player, but I never thought he would like. I don't think he sucks. I just think he's always been misused in Philly, and the expectations have been too high for him. Can they? Can he enter into a system to where he's asked to play? 
he needs confidence more than anything. Like this dude. It, I, the, the parallels yeah. between him and Porzingis are very similar besides the injury stuff. Like if you take the injury stuff out of it, the strict play on the floor where Porzingis is still a really valuable offensive player in the sense that he spaces the floor. He can still shoot. He can kind of get his own, sh- get a, get a shot a little bit here and there, not his own shot, but, and yeah. Ben Simmons on the defensive end is still really valuable. It's just the offensive end for, for Simmons and the defensive end for Porzingis where they just suck, man. Like just yeah. absolutely suck at times. It's just, it's a really weird parallel for the two. Yeah. I mean, where Philly goes from here. I mean, this is the end of the process, right? I mean, there's no way they run it back. Like Ben has to be gone. That I mean, that's just a that's a given right there. I mean, unless you know Joel comes out of nowhere and says, "Hey, I'm out. Send send me somewhere." And then Philly's like, "Hey, let me just try to you know build around Ben." But I, yeah, I just don't. I mean, you could tell me tomorrow that he you know he's traded in two weeks and it's I don't know, it's just some random package of players, or you could tell me he like he gets. A, a massive package back in return for Philly. And I would, I just don't know what his value is. I'm, I don't know. Coming up, we've got to get into burning questions about the Mavericks offseason. We may get into a little bit more about the conference finals. I got to talk about the Hawks real quick. And yeah. get into the Hawks a little bit. But we'll get into our burning questions. And if you have burning questions for people that you want to hire for your team, for your business, whatever you're running right now, indeed.com is the place. If you're the hiring expert for your company, what you really need is help making your life easier. And what you need is help making a short list of quality candidates. It's so hard to go from like a hundred candidates, a thousand candidates down to the 10, the five, you know, so then you can actually make the, the small little decisions between one or the other and go through all that stuff, go through the interview process with them. Indeed helps you with that. They help you narrow down these candidates within with tools like Indeed's Instant Match, giving you quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed fit your job description immediately. And Indeed skills test that on average reduce hiring time by 27%. And I'm sure that's an average. So there's some that have saved even more time on it. Get started right now with a $75 j- sponsored job credit for free to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked. Get a $75 job credit at Indeed.com slash locked. Indeed.com slash locked. Offer valid through June 30th. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Isaac Harris, the Atlanta Hawks are in the Eastern Conference Finals, and I'm yeah. sure I'm sure Mavs fans will be hearing it from Hawks fans after they stop celebrating themselves. They'll start. I'm sure that over the next couple of days, the Luca trade trade like no, please stuff do. will start coming I, in, and the, the zeitgeist, <laughs> like all that stuff's gonna start coming in. But what do we take from this Trey Young making the Eastern Conference Finals, making the Conference Finals before Luca makes it out of the first round? Oh, no, nothing. I, I think it's so funny that every single GM around the league, hands down, would take Luca over Trey Young to start their franchise. One hundred percent. Like that's not even remotely a question and debate. So it's not a debate between the two players because Luca is, you know, two All NBA first team All NBAs in his first three seasons. Like that's not even a conversation. It never was, but especially like that is like distant. He has distanced himself in that even further. What? I'm just sipping tea. I'm just <laughs> sipping your tea. Now, I think when it gets into the, the the team building of it, I've seen a lot of Mavs fans start to have that conversation of like, man, look how Atlanta built their team compared to Dallas. And yes, looking at it right now, it's like, look at the pieces that they got in making the trade for Capella and, you know, making the Bogdanovich, you know, deal and, you know, signing, you know, Gallo and, and all yep. these little moves around the edges to surround Trey Young. Now we could go the whole next segment and dissecting Atlanta's moves and draft picks. Like how many of these guys are first round draft picks and DeAndre Hunter, he's not playing right now, but like Cam Reddish. They, they hit on the- draft picks. They hit on Collins. They hit on Herter. They hit on Hunter who was not playing in this, but they hit on those guys. And so those guys are real small contracts that they didn't need to, you know, account for. And then the Bogdanovich thing, they hit on that. Whereas the Mavs didn't necessarily hit on Porzingis, especially in the the playoffs. So like, there's just a couple exactly. of things there. And then, and then since those guys were all like draft picks and they are on their rookie deal, they had this all this cap space last yeah. off season that was way more beneficial than any other off season it seems like. And Dallas had the choice, right? Dallas had one. There's two things that goes into this. You're like, why why doesn't Dallas have Gallo, Bogdanovich, Capello? Why didn't why didn't Dallas go get these guys? It comes down to one one main thing, but there's also the whole thing that people f- tend to forget when it comes to free agency that it takes two to tango, right? Dallas was, was very interested in Gallo. Gallo chose to go elsewhere. 
Dallas was very interested in Jay Crowder, who's playing a great role in, in the Sun. He went on a radio station saying it was Dallas or Phoenix, and I picked Phoenix over Dallas. So it's not like sometimes Dallas wasn't interested in some of these guys. It's just these guys just didn't pick Dallas. So we can't always fall into that trap of like, why didn't Dallas go get X player? Well, it takes two to tangle. The player has to come here too. But the biggest thing is Dallas gambled and chose the Giannis route. Like You mean Jeremy Lamb didn't choose the Mavericks? <laughs> I'm not going down that route, but <laughs> Dallas chose the Giannis. Route. I'm not going to name names. <laughs> and they wanted to have the shot at Giannis. Dallas landed the, the generational talent and Luka Doncic. They looked at the Giannis situation and said, if there is a team in the league with a single player in the league that would have a shot at luring Giannis away from Milwaukee, if he didn't sign the extension, then it's going to be Luka Doncic in Dallas. And they, and that's the car. So when they're making those decisions, yeah, they gambled for sure. They gambled by if they didn't go after some of these bigger contracts. Like Gallo is due $19 million this year, $20 million next year, $21 million. Like that's a massive deal for Gallinari. Say so, it with your chest. <laughs> but that's huge. That's a huge deal. And it's like, why didn't Dallas go out and spend all this money and make the trade for Cabello and all this stuff? Because they wanted to have the shot at Giannis. And it didn't work out because Giannis signed the extension. But if Giannis didn't sign that extension and he was going to be an unrestricted free agent this summer, you know who would be pissed right now? Mavs fans by saying, and it, it, if the Mavericks signed, you know, big money to Gallo and all, these, I'm like, we we gave Gallo sixty million dollars and now we don't have a shot at Giannis right now. Like, we and would Giannis be, goes to like San Antonio to play with Pop, right? Something crazy, and you're like, we could have had Giannis, right? Yeah, so like we would have been super pissed about that. So. Dallas just, they gambled with the Giannis stuff. They gambled and say, you know what? We'll keep our books clean for the most part to have a shot at Giannis, to pairing up Giannis and Luka. And it didn't work. And While still having Porzingis, like they still made that move, exactly. even, even if that's not good enough, right? Like they still so, made that So if we want to look back in hindsight and be like, wow, why didn't we get all these players in 2019? I, I get it. Like we can do that. Like you can do that. I just, I get why they didn't because they wanted to have the shot at Giannis. And honestly, I would have did the same thing. I would have said, I want to take that chance of pairing up Giannis and freaking Luka Doncic for the next how many other years. And it just didn't work. So hey, that's my whole spill on that. There you go. All right, let's get into burning questions about the offseason. Give me your first one. <laughs> oh gosh, burning questions of the offseason. Um, <sighs> I want to do like an, a non-obvious one, but like we'll just keep it obvious. What's the what's the formation like? What is the let me say structure? What is the structure of the front office? I think that's the biggest thing right now that we're all waiting on, and it has. I mean, we we alluded to this in the first segment. It has to be coming because the draft lottery is tomorrow. We ideally you don't want to head into an NBA draft or even that whole process too much without somebody leading that and so like what's the structure and i say structure because we don't know how they're going to structure all of that like is there a world that they bring in a gm but michael finley is the president of basketball operations sure is it the other way around do they bring in a basketball op from outside but michael finley is the gm do they keep that role the same person like they have with donnie in the past is Haralabob there? Like that's the biggest question of everything. That's so, one of my questions. Is Haralabob there? <laughs> like, but but just that whole structure. I think for me, like, and for like, that's the biggest burning question right now. What will that look like? Yeah, it, it's it's interesting to see to think about that. This Mavericks team can be completely revamped as far as front office and coach like the direction, the leadership besides Cuban can be completely revamped by tomorrow right or next week right like they could come in yeah. and be like all right we have this guy and we're bringing in masai ujiri and he has agreed to have Jam uh, jamal mosley as the head coach right that was one of the stipulations or something right like it could just just be completely changed by next week it could be uh finley is just pick is just picking up where donnie nelson left off it could be whoever right like it's just really interesting to see and i'm interested to see which direction they go do they do mr or mrs outside hire or do they decide to keep in-house if they keep both of the guys in-house, Finley and Jamal Mosley, then all of a sudden, what change did we really bring? Did we just get a little worse on both fronts, right? Like, is it, mm. uh, and so it, it, that's a, a huge, big question. I'm going to piggyback off that one 
One of my burning questions was, is Haralba still there? I yeah. think that is a big, huge deal. And I think there's only one free agent that Haralba would actually be a positive for. And there was news the about him on there was news about him on Sunday. And I'm gonna get into it coming up. But before we do, let's talk about Built Jeez. Bar. Built Bar is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. They're absolutely delicious. We love them. I eat them all the time. I had a grasshopper cookie bar today, the uh, the, the Built Bar. They're really, really good. I can't wait for you guys to be able to get your hands on some of these. They have a bunch of flavors already available right now. Let's see. Oh, they have cookies and cream back. That one's the one that's been out for a little while. Caramel brownie is one. Oh, that one actually. I might go get some of those. Go get you a box of Built Bar right now. They're absolutely delicious. This caramel brownie bar that's out right now, 130 calories, only... Uh, it only has four grams of sugar. Four grams of sugar for a bar that tastes like a candy bar and is covered in 100% chocolate, 17 grams of protein, and there's only uh, a couple of carbs there. Not too many carbs, just some carbs. And uh, they're they're really good. Go check it out. Built Bar, use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off at BuiltBar.com. All right, Isaac Harris, the one free agent where I think Haralabot would be a positive. Think about it. I'm ready. News I know who you're talking about. So. There is news about him on Sunday. He has been, in the past, a person that has been interested in cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, do something with his contract. He is now a free agent, and it's Spencer Dinwiddie. <laughs> Where I think Haralaba would be a positive. <laughs> like, oh, I could work with that guy? Interesting. I'll come on board. For everyone else, though, I think it's a huge negative because it looks really bad for the front office. There's a lot of drama involved with it. Luca obviously doesn't like him, which is a huge negative just overall. Like, if your star player doesn't like a thing, then... That shouldn't be a thing. <laughs> it shouldn't be anymore. So one of my burning questions is, is Haralaba still part of the front office? And will he be? Will he continue to be? Will Cuban make the announcement? Will we even know? Will we just go into the season, go to media day, and have to ask somebody? <laughs> like Have to ask yeah. uh, whoever the new GM is, if it's Finley. Like, hey, Finley, is Haralaba Volgaris still part of the front office? Will we have to ask that and wait till then? It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I mean, we talked about the Dirk news, I guess, Saturday's podcast about, you know, Dirk joining uh, the front office as a special advisor, special advi yeah, special uh, advisor and all of that. And, you know, we're super excited about it. It makes me feel better about the situation for sure. I love Dirk, all of that. But they could add anybody in the world to the front office right now. But until we know <laughs> if Bob's there or not, then like I, in a way it's like, OK, well. That's got to be a negative for somebody interviewing for this whole thing too, right? Yeah, well, that's, you know, Woj said that on his podcast of saying yeah. there's nobody, no executive around the league with stature is going to take that job if Bob's still there. And that's why a lot of people think there's no way they bring it. Okay, let me ask you this. It's packed arena, night one, Bob walks out, and he sits front row. Kerala? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do fans boo him? Yes. Is it like yes, hostile? No, because the question is, do fans know what he looks like? <laughs> no, okay, I think by, I think by now, yes, I think by I think by now, people have Googled him enough and they know him enough that um, I don't expect to see him at a game. But I'm yeah. just I I just wonder that because he did set front row so much, you know, this season. So, is there a non-zero chance he's the GM? There's no way. No way. So there's a non... There, there's, Mark Cuban is bold, but that is... The 0% chance he's the, the new guy. I just don't see... I don't see a world in which Dirk and Finley and the guy... Like, yeah. I, I don't... I don't see them signing off on that. If... Yeah. If they're truly part of that process and truly helping make that decision of who that next person is to run the franchise, like GM basketball applies, I don't see Dirk and them signing off on him running the show. Not how it all, how it's all unfolded. Interesting. Especially all right. Give me, Luca. give me another burning question. Uh, I mean, another obvious here, but like, who's the coach? <laughs> I, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's burning. That's, a, that's, that's, I think, that's I think another thing is, for me, who gets interviewed that, you yeah. know, if it's Mosley and then X, Y, Z, who is Y, Z in that? Like, who's the other three or four guys that, you know, or women who get, you know, interviewed in that. So we all, I mean, I, the betting favorites, Bet Online AG, our friends at Bet Online have been, you know, has Jamal Mosley as the overwhelming favorite. Insanely uh, overwhelming. <laughs> yes. Now, <laughs> I've seen, I, I, we listened to Bill Simmons and he 
they took their fair shots at, at Luca the other day and uh, calling him a diva and all of a sudden saying Mosley's his buddy and they're just hiring his buddy. If it, and I'm like, I don't know. Like, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, I actually think Mosley will tell Luca like it is more than that's just Rick giving not, that's just not giving Mosley any credit at all. As it's a not, it's not at all. I didn't like that whole segment, which is okay. I mean, a lot of you guys listen to this. Uh, you probably disagree with my 2019 free agent take. I said a while ago, that's but, fine. Like it's okay to disagree with podcasts, but like I I I really hated that whole segment about the Luca Diva part because they acted like Luca's just behind the scenes calling all the shots and they're just like catering to him and all this stuff. I'm like, no, what oh, Luca's, Luca's doing? Is- he's doing it uh, above the scenes, in front of the scenes. He's doing it on the court. Like no, but Luca's is over in Slovenia saying, "Just let me play with my friends, bro." Like <laughs> I don't, I would like figure out your crap. Oh, like back in Dallas, like please. And you know he's talking with Bill Duffy, and Bill Duffy's probably worried about this more than Luca is right now. Luca's yeah. just like, "Let me play basketball, bro." Like I just want to hang out with my dogs and, and hang out at home and. And Luca, Luca's more like, if I think something, if I want something to happen, I'll tell you it while the game is going on. (laughs) Like, I would yell at Rick Carla. I'll yell at Bob Valgaris. Like, I'll yell at all these people while things are happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the diva, sure, I guess, right? But he's also like a top five player in the NBA. All players do that. Uh, yeah, there's one thing of like talking about him as far as like on the court and just how emotional he is and with refs and like all that stuff. That's one thing. But to act like he is like behind the scenes doing all this stuff, that was that was a little too far. He's not LeBron because that's that that's not Luca uh, at this point. So no. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think just who's the other coaches that get interviewed besides Mosley? If yeah. Mosley's still the, the favorite in that, well, you know, if they come out two weeks from now and saying, "All right, Dallas is uh, moving on to the second round." Their second round is Mosley, Jason Kidd, and Stephen Silas. <laughs> you want to come back, bud? You done with that? The Houston loses <laughs> loses their pick on Tuesday night. And and I was like, hey, their coach, so... their coach the next day. <laughs> hey, uh, Mark, I'm down to come back. <laughs> I'd be okay with that. <laughs> but no, we would, just I mean, JJ have... Bray has got to be on that coaching staff, though. We've yeah, been I... saying that the past two days. I think it's a given. I think it's happening. If I had the <laughs> Um, if I had the, the Charles Barkley guarantee button, I should actually make that a button. That's a good idea. Good. If, I had the, if I had the guarantee button, he'll be part of the coaching staff no matter who it is. Yeah. Yeah. What's no your question? Do you have another question? One of my questions is what do we learn from the top four teams? Because I think it's it's interesting to look at some of these teams. Like the Clippers are in the are in the Western Conference Finals now. Suns made the Western Conference Finals. What do we learn roster wise from those teams? Uh can the Mavericks win with – so one of the things is, can the Mavericks win with Porzingis being the second-best player? I'm not sure that's yes. However, they got down – they got really close. They got seven-game series against the against the Clippers, and the Jazz didn't get there. Like, the Jazz didn't get to seven games, and Kawhi was missing the last two games. Like, I got – I was more encouraged by that. Just seeing that the, the Clippers – beat the Jazz in six games, and yeah. the Mavericks took them to seven, and the Clippers didn't have Kawhi for the last two games. Like, I just love how I heard from other Mavs fans during that Utah thing was like, man, look what it looks like when you have other playmakers on the floor. I'm like, well, that doesn't really cure everything, okay, because they just got torched defensively. So, like, do we, want to pick, do we have to pick and choose sometimes? Like, all right, let's just put all defenders out there, but then nobody can freaking dribble? Or do we just want to – so, yeah, it was – the Utah thing was fascinating to me, and I don't understand like what they do from here. But like, I think the Clippers thing shows you you have to be able to go small because yes, yeah, Utah right. just couldn't do it. They couldn't right. get to that point of saying I got to pull Rudy out of the out of the game. They just couldn't gra- like get themselves to that point. And you just have to have that option to be able to go small. And being able to go small means your second guy probably <laughs> needs to be a you know a guard or a wing. You just need a, a quality player, like a a, yeah. a a player you can count on in that lineup, like at least one more that you can count on. And Josh Richardson was supposed to be that guy. He was not, not even close, not even yeah. remotely close. Uh, can we go off on Seth Curry a little bit? Just just like a little bit. <sighs> Kevin Herter. People are still bringing up the Seth Curry Richardson trade, which we we're on the he, record. Dallas still lost. Like the I Mavs lost the trade. Not, not even for sure. Not even close. For yeah. sure, hundred percent. But. Seth Curry doesn't get to do what Seth Curry's doing in the Western Conference against the Clippers. Right? Like Seth Curry. Trey Young. 
Kevin Herter was taking advantage as soon as as soon as the the Sixers went against a team with a creator score that can kind of do it on do it his own. They attacked Seth Curry over and over and yeah. over again. You can't get away with that in the in the Western Conference. Like Patrick Beverly couldn't play against yeah. <laughs> against the Mavericks in the Western Conference. There's just certain guys like you just can't get away with some of that stuff against elite creators. And the the Hawks have not gone up against a team like that yet at all. Yeah. The Hawks are getting away with playing uh, Trey Young and Lou Williams together. Yes. There's it's, just, that, it's a different, yeah. it's just a completely different setup over the there. So, world. so yes, would Curry have helped the Mavericks? Would the Mavericks probably have won the series with Curry? Probably. He makes a couple more shots. The Trey Burke minutes don't happen. Like yeah. The Brunson minutes probably turn into more Curry minutes and there's more shooting for sure. hundred percent. But it's not this slam dunk. He would have been hundred percent, you know, like, playing all the time and been rotation player. Like he would have got picked on too. And it would have been really tough for the Mavs to find him minutes at times. Well, it, and it also shows you just how much matchups in the playoffs dictate so yeah, much right. narrative around your team to where you look at the Maverick situation, playing the Clippers and that small ball and like the super athletic guys. And, you know, they make KP a guy who stood in the corner. Yes. If it land, like, and I love this run Atlanta's going on. You guys know friends with Melvin Hunt. He's been on the spot. Like, I'm so happy for that team. It's a fun team. So this isn't a shot at Trey and no. like this. I try and do, but if like if they match up against just any like what other team would just target Trey Young? Like if they had to play the Clippers or you know the Lakers or Dallas or whoever it is, like it, they would just switch on Trey Young take him to the post and like they would just treat him like he's Pat Beverly and say, let's do this. Yeah. The Knicks didn't have anybody to do that. No. Philly, they don't have any other creators. The, I mean, like what? The Knicks, Randall should have been able to, but Randall just turned into a pumpkin. Like at yeah, the beginning well, that, of that series, it was just like completely out of it. But it's like, look, if, if they matched up with somebody who constantly took advantage of that matchup, Harden, would, Kyrie, Durant, if that, any of those like, players were on the same team, maybe. We would have looked at this whole thing like so much different. And yeah. like even Atlanta is like, man, we would be looking at, but they they hit the home run as yeah. far as like matchups in the first round and second round. And it's like, bam, they're in the conference finals. And shout out to them. I'm happy for them. They go to the finals. Let's do it. Let's let's ride that train. That'll be fun. But it just shows you how much matchups in the playoffs just shape their <laughs> You imagine Trey Young gets a title <laughs> before Luca. People would have been like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, I might have to just delete the Twitter app from my phone that day. No, I think it. I think that exposes people more than anything. If they want to do the whole like, "Oh, Trey's better," I'm like, if you really think Trey Young's better than Luca, then I don't know about. No, that. it wouldn't matter about better. <laughs> it's just that he got one before Luca would be. Yeah, I think it would just be more about like if you want to do the like roster building around the two sure get that like like somebody tweeted us tonight and said man uh you know lucas should be watching trey i'm like really like why like why, why going going, he... going off of this whole hawk situation my big burning question is how do we evaluate these players based on just these clippers games like literally the mavericks if they hit three more threes they win the game against game seven against the clippers and that now we're talking about them potentially in the western conference finals i mean yeah. it's just it, the ball it just it it can change on a on a dime at some points, and so the Mavericks like we talk about them like they're trash sometimes because they're out in the first round. But it's not like they were out in the first round and got swept. Yeah, it's not like they got embarrassed in the first round. They How's got beat by Kawhi Leonard, who went off and had one of the greatest series we've ever seen. Like it's like we have to qualify some of this stuff sometimes. And it's wild to think about where our fan base is at right now compared to like where some of these other fan bases. The lockdown right? Mavs fan base or the <laughs> well like. <laughs> Portland. I mean, yeah, we, right. One of my questions we obviously don't have time to is like, can Dallas capitalize on a team blowing it up? Like yeah. what's Portland going to do with CJ? What's Utah going to do? They yeah. really go to run the whole thing back again. Philly. There's no way they run the whole thing back again. And like, I'm missing another team probably in there. It's like, there's probably going to be some big changes with some really good teams in the league. Lakers. This year. Yeah. And can that, well, I don't think they're trading AD or LeBron, but their third star in Kuzma could find a new home, but like, can Dallas, Sell some shoes. Can they jump in there and like, hey, we'll take, we'll let's swap. I don't know, but it should be a fun off season. There you go, guys. Go listen to Lockdown today. It's the best twenty minutes in sports podcast, guys. Thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Mavs. Go, boom.